Welcome once again to another streamed episode of the Hard Rock Show. I'm Andrew. And I'm Dave. Uh, good to see you all here. I don't know what's happening with that stuff. Get off of my screen. Whoa, this is all going very, very strange. Sorry, yeah, there's really? some different graphics. Yeah, we're having a few um, glitches behind the scenes. No, we had to clear up some lag before, and then because of character limits and stuff, things went a bit pear-shaped on me tonight. So it's all a bit sort of rickety, but we should be in the <laughs> swing of things now after we got off to a semi-sort of false start there. Uh, <laughs> good to see you all here. Make sure you say hi in the comments and all that sort of stuff as well. Tonight we're going to talk about a lot of things. There's going to be uh, the new albums from uh, Goodbye June, Pike vs. The Automated, and the Neptune Power Federation. We're going to review all those. We're going to chat about new singles from uh, the Proton Energy Pills, Nazareth, Hell in the Club and uh, Dream Widow, also known as Foo Fighters. Um, <laughs> what else we got here? We're going to chat about a few different things, like some giveaway stuff going on and uh, some other competitions too, as well as plugging a gig in a minute. And uh, we're also going to uh, have a bit of a discussion about overrated, underrated, and uh, we'll get to that in a little bit as well. But yeah, there's a bit going on as always. But before we get stuck into things, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, all the usual shit that everyone tells you to do. Our details are in the description box of the episode. Please find your preferred social platform. Like, follow, subscribe, give it a share, any of those things. Whenever you see our post, give us a comment, all that sort of stuff. Interacting with us is how you get help us get out there into the wider world and get more people to know about what the hell we're doing here with our antics. Uh, and while you're checking out that little box, check out our fantastic sponsors as well. A big thank you to Squidding Scripting, Old Cotton Rockstar Finance. Their details, just like ours, are in that description box, so please do find them, give them a follow, a like, or whatever else you can think of. Uh, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Even better yet, go and check out their stuff. Uh what else? I don't know. I think that's about the usual spiel I tend to run through before we get stuck into things. Got some comments coming through. Keep them coming as we go through and do the rounds. But Dave, how are you going? Yeah, I'm good. Life has gotten busy again. The holiday mm. season is well and fully behind us, which is a shame. But keeping busy is good. Uh, we went up to Channel 31 on Thursday night after work and yeah. did have some promo stuff, which should be coming out in the next few months. Looking forward to mm. seeing the outtakes a bit more than anything. I want the outtakes. <laughs> They'd be interesting. Certainly was an uh, interesting time and yeah, yeah fucked up simple things. <laughs> That's how it works, man. Yeah, it was fun. It should all turn out yeah. good in the end. But yeah, mm. like I said, it's been a busy week. There's always been something on after work. Kids have got stuff happening now. Caught up with some old friends on Friday night, went out with some drinks and spoke about old people I used to work at Big W with many years ago. So okay. I yeah. forgot quite. A, I, I have so many stories I remember, and I forgot quite a few. It's just like, oh shit, we did that. <laughs> that was fantastic. But <laughs> apart from that, life just keeps getting busier and busier. Bring on the next holiday. Bring on Easter, and we can have some time off. How are you guys? How are you, man? Um, same as you. As I haven't done a lot socially. Uh, just been busy. Works on and all the editing and, and planning and prepping and all sorts of stuff with this side of things you know for those that don't know i do work a day job have family to look after and put another 40 hours a week plus into this nonsense that we do here as well so there's a lot that goes into it it's usually keeps me up pretty late most nights of the week um but that's pretty much what i've been doing just trying to get ahead of things as well because the last couple of weeks have been exceptionally manic and uh should be through the worst right now that thing on thursday with channel 31 was a great time the timing was a bit awkward but it was all good. Like it was a small thing to go and do, go and hang out for an hour and have some fun there with them. We had a great time. That that footage they sent me through, which I was able to send to you and then onto the page, and that was yeah, a bit of fun. Cool. Yeah, that that makes us look professional and shit, but we're really not. And I want to see those outtakes. <laughs> of them. And so, if anyone of the networks watching, remember to send it through. I'll, I'll use it if you guys don't. Um, but yeah, we did a whole lot of stuff there. You know, plugged the show for us on on Channel Thirty One and Channel Forty Four and that, and then we also uh what else we did some stuff for them so you know helping them get sponsors and that kind of stuff too so just some just some uh i don't know doing some fun stuff we, we neither of us have done anything like that before either so nope. it was a complete first i mean i've done some tv stuff here and there so i get the idea uh but actually doing things pieces to camera like that it, we don't do that very often even amongst ourselves here on the show so it was uh it was a, an interesting experience and you and I've never done anything like that before together. It was actually yeah. cool. We did it pretty well in sync, which was good. <laughs> so, it worked out well, no rehearsal or anything. We just went in, read what we had. Yeah. We barely read the script. We just thought, no, we'll we'll um we'll work it out as we go. Because <laughs> that's the, the way we work, man. <laughs> exactly. The more we try and put us in the box, the worse it's gonna go. So we just sort of went, yeah, fuck it, we'll walk in there, we'll do it. They knew that too. It wasn't like we just rocked up unprepared. They knew we were gonna be walking in like that. So it was all all good. Yeah. <clears throat> 
but yeah, it was a lot of fun. That was probably the uh, the quote unquote highlight of the last sort of week or so. But that's why we couldn't do a stream on Thursday. And then Friday didn't work because just numbers weren't there. And so we went, ah, oh, fuck it, we'll just push things out and go back to Monday this week, and we'll start doing the usual things. So Mondays and Thursdays back to normal again, uh, as we have been doing for a while now. Well, let's say hello to some people out there. Uh, Nicole has joined us on YouTube saying, hello all, good to see you here again. Thank you for jumping in. Uh, same with Sally over on Facebook hey, saying, hey people, good to see you here as well. Another regular in Dean. Hey guys, hope all is well. Yes, we are well, We're hope good. you are too. Uh, what else have we got here? Ben Supertramp, yeah baby. Thank you for your kind words on the post on previous to like today yeah. as well um for the that was very nicely put there thank you i hope you enjoy what we do here tonight as well uh rowan aka sumaleth over on youtube he's giving us the horns as always good to see you and uh ben manic monday yes it's manic every day but yeah mondays in particular are good <laughs> and bell good to see you as well uh, she's gonna love the shirt andrew i knew you'd like this shirt incubus is a big uh, band for you uh love the uh skull <laughs> day yes, it is a skull I'm not sure what's going on with the teeth there but that is a skull yeah i got a whole collection <laughs> is that what your citronella candles in? No, the citronella candles to the side. Haven't lit it yet, but as soon as the mosquitoes come out, they're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, Eric. Twenty-two times last week. Uh, so yeah, not I'm happening again. Right? What's that? That was twenty-two times on one foot. You were saying before we went on live. one foot. Yeah, yeah. What are you little bastards? <laughs> I'm tipping that's probably going to be a bin later on tonight, but we'll get to that in a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're thinking about it now. Sally, off the cuff is the way to go. It cuts out the plastic, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Dean's going going well, still recovering from seeing the Angels on Saturday night. That would have been a cracker gig, so I'm glad you had a good night. Awesome. Um, yeah, but keep coming, keep coming in and say hi and all that sort of stuff as we go along. If you're watching later on, you're not all listening later on, you're not tuning in live, then we do appreciate you taking time to check it out. And obviously, you can't get involved in the conversation if you're tuning in. Not live, but you get the idea. Hopefully, you're enjoying what we do anyway. And uh, for those on Instagram, if you are leaving comments, I can't see them on this platform. So just keep that in the back of your head that if you are commenting on Instagram, you can watch it. But I can't see your comments coming through on this platform here. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Shall we get stuck into some into some stuff here, Dave? Get moving along? Yeah. Sorry, some singles. All right, let's go to some singles. We'll get to the Hard Rock Happenings portion of the show. We talk about some singles and some general news and stuff going on. So in all every band we talk about tonight, so there's, what, seven bands we're talking about tonight. Every one of them links to check out something is in the description. So the Proton Energy Pills and their new single, Revolution. Uh, this is a bit of a different one here. Uh, oh, good. Here we go. Lee, our good friend Lee has gone hey, evening, man. gents. Good to see you here, buddy. Thank you jumping in uh but yes our first single tonight is the proton energy pills revolution and uh this is something i'm going to try and go to a bit of a preamble here about 30 years ago this is a band out of wollongong they're a pre-grunge rock band apparently they disbanded 30 years ago but from then we've got a couple of new tracks that are sort of finishing off of those things from way back in the day there's this one and another one out there as well so if this gets your attention there's more to go and find too but dave how'd you go this name is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I was a big mm -hmm. fan of Roger Rabbit growing up, so this mm -hmm. is what I imagine it sounds like inside his head when he pops one of those pills. <laughs> I like skater it version. Kid. Exactly. You know, I, I learned <laughs> as a kid, if you've got a problem as an adult, pop a pill and it will make everything okay. <laughs> Cartoons, you learn everything from in the 80s, man, and we turned out okay. You know, yeah. Regular sure. viewers know I'm not a massive punk fan, but this is actually pretty decent. It's high energy, and you know it's all over in two and a half minutes. It's straight up punk rock. You know, it. Mm. I've I've heard a lot worse as far as punk goes, but yeah, this had a pretty cool hook and you know, two and a half minutes of just banging away at some chords, cool energy. It was fun. Mm. Yeah, no, it's a good little trap, this one. Um, they're going through releasing some archival content. So you got this track now, Revolution. Another track is tombstone that's out there as well um there's a video clip of this one which is why we chose this one to go with and i like that it's set to the the skate park environment that works really well for this and that's the whole vibe it's the skater sort of punk that kind of thing from you know 30 years ago thereabouts but you know it it, it goes really well this one it, it's um nothing complicated pretty straightforward i like the lyrics they're pretty fun and, and there's a bit of a story in that too and there's some nice attitude in there too. But, yeah, if you like sort of anything punk or crossover, this is something to check out. 
Uh, the vocals have some nice attitude, simple riffs. Not really complicated here, but yeah, it's a it's a blast in the past, but it sounds pretty fresh still today. So yeah, this is you know for something old that's new again kind of thing. They've done a pretty good job with it. We'll see what more comes out of it. Yeah, but if you're an old school fan of the Proton Energy Pills, you'll be happy to know there's a couple of new tracks out there. Um, but yeah, let us know how you went with that one, folks, and we'll move on to the next one, which is, you know, spoiler alert, fuck, this is a cracking single. Uh, this is Nazareth Strange Days. Uh, it's in the description box. It's in the comments as well, so please check it out. Uh, yeah, Nazareth Strange Days is the next one. Before we do jump to that, Sally's jumped in to say, I hear Roland's band. It's cool. Nice. That's actually a good reference there too for the Proton Energy Pills. Very nicely put. All righty. Moving on to Nazareth. Now, we got this one because they're coming into their 54th year, this band, uh, from Scotland. In case you didn't know that, their 25th studio album, Surviving the Law, will be released on April 15. And uh, this is the new which is the first single from that album. I think it's a cracker, but Dave, how'd you go? Yeah, this was fantastic. I had to actually check that this was the same band because I haven't heard anything from them for years. Mm. So. Listening to the song, I was like, okay, Nazareth, it can't be the same guys that did Hair of the Dog and I Love Hurts and everything back in the day. But, yeah, it is. And yeah. you know, it sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Great look, great energy, lots of grooves to this. Um, but, yeah, they've got so many albums out. The last one was, like, 2018. When you check for the mm. discography, it's mostly 70s and 80s. They took a break in the 90s, but they've still been pumping stuff out regularly. And, you know, it's... Yeah. It sounds as good as this, and the new next album sounds as good as this. I'm definitely going to check it out because, yeah, it was a great song. Mm. This one, um, we haven't spent a lot of time on Nazareth over the years on the show, but this one, like, th th it's funny how we keep getting these older bands that aren't taking a backward step, and this is another one of those. Mm. They are just fucking, they launched out with this single. Uh, it's more of a hard rock than a metal song, but fuck, this one just has it's upbeat, it's groovy as fuck. Like the groove on this is mm -hmm. so damn cool. Um, if this doesn't get you moving at all, you fucking made a stone as far as I'm concerned. This just fucking swings. Um, great melody, just you know, it's a simple little song, but it's just the way they put it together and the way they've got the bottom end to sort of really pump out on this one. I don't know, I just fuck. I just love the way this one moves. It, it's just really, really cool. It's catchy as fuck. The hook gets stuck in there straight away. And this is all in the good side. It's a solid riff, solid bass, solid drums. Everything is solid here. It's got a nice sort of bit of grit in there too. And just the vocals over the top. It's just if you love old school hard rock done really, really well, this is a song you got to check out. It's a fucking cracking single. Absolutely love it. It's one of those ones where you hear it and you go, oh, hang on. If the album's like this, this is going to be a fucking contender at the end of the year. Mm. Like, you just hear it straight and go, wow, it's good. Um, all righty. So Lee has said here, uh, I only have Hair of the Dog previously, neglected no more. We'll check out the new material for sure. Research the oldest statesman of the late of late in British rock and metal. Yes, that's definitely, definitely true. Yeah. Uh, DB Cooper, good to see you here on Facebook. He's on. How long will this show go on for? Um well, in terms of longevity of the program, we go for as long as we can. Uh, but as for <laughs> as regarding this broadcast tonight, um, I don't know, hour and a half or so, probably thereabouts. Yeah, we tend to that average. That. we'll see how we go. But yeah, hopefully you can tune in for some of it. Otherwise, just check it out when you can. Uh, or and Dar Darren over on on YouTube. Sorry, I'll get my tongue twisted there. Nazareth showing you how to do it. Yes, definitely, very yeah. very cool. Bell agrees. Uh, Nazareth track, shit hot. These guys still know how to rock. Definitely. This is one hell of a fucking song. I think out of the four tonight that we're going to talk about, that is probably my favorite one, to be honest. I really, really enjoyed that one. I, it's a cracking song. All right. From that, we move on to the latest from Italian band, Hell in the Club. This is a band that we both covered before on the show. The new single is Kamikaze. There's a link for that in the description and in the comments. So please do go and check it out. Well, we have a bit of a, a waffle on about this song too. But how did you go, Dave? This is a band that we're not strangers to. Yeah, we've reviewed a few albums from these guys, and they're mm. always delivering the goods. Um, this is exactly what you would expect from it. They haven't changed to soul or hip-hop or anything. They're just doing yeah. exactly what they do. You know, yeah. if you like the high-energy rock and roll with lots of melody and gang choruses, cool riffs, cool solos, like I said, lots of melody and mm -hmm. great hooks to the song. This is exactly what you would expect from this band. And, yeah, I'm excited for the new album because if it's like this and like what they usually do, it's not going to disappoint. They're always pretty, pretty, pretty reliable band. Mm -hmm. 
Did you find this one to be a little bit more sort of upbeat and more traditional 80s than a lot of their usual stuff? I thought this wasn't quite as dark as, as previous stuff we've listened to. Yeah, it didn't have the they, – they were the imagery on the album covers were always a bit more menacing than the actual music itself. Mm. But, yeah, it was, a, it was a bit more brighter in general, but I always thought that their, their imagery mm. didn't match the music of what you get. I remember the first time I heard one of their albums, yeah. I was expecting from Freddy Krueger Slice and Dice. And it was more just, <laughs> hey, it's summer party time. Occasionally we might mention something that might be construed as horror, but for the most part, yeah. it's fun. It's definitely that. Uh, if you're a fan of that whole 80s resurgence thing that's been a big deal for a few years now, this is something you're going to really, really enjoy. I'm not doing anything new with this one. It's a very, got a really catchy hook with a nice key change right before the chorus too. Uh, but it just leans into, you know, good riffs, good melody, all that sort of stuff as well. And, um, yeah, <laughs> Belle's got the right comment here. She's gone, uh, this track could have come straight out of 1987 in a good way. And that's pretty much exactly that's right. Cool. It comes straight out of that era. Um, like, there's nothing – it's it's funny with these bands because there's a lot of them um, now. that we, like, we had Nesta not so long ago and all that sort of stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And um, there's heaps and heaps going on. But, yeah, the um, the – with this band though i find they're one of the better ones they're one of the more engaging listens because i just they have a bit of fun like they do have a bit of a tongue-in-cheek about them there's a lot of fun in it but they write really good songs and they're really really talented and so when it, i know it's a crowded field this whole you know bringing back the 80s again but this is one of those bands if you haven't checked them out they're a, a sneaky good one they one of the better ones out there that i think people should be more aware of not less aware of so, yeah, I like this one. It's another another solid single. If you like the 80s resurgence of rock and metal, then, yeah, this is definitely one you got to check out. If you don't like that stuff, then stay clear. It's not going to do anything to change your mind at all. Uh, yeah. For those <laughs> paying attention, the band is celebrating their 10th anniversary of their debut album. Uh, so they're releasing a new EP called Kamikaze, uh, 10 Years in the Slums, on March the 18th. It's coming out. Uh, it's got five tracks on it. There are two new original songs on there, one re-recording from the debut album and two singles, one from Alice Cooper, one from Wasp. So the Alice cool. Cooper was the man behind the mask, which we had on a, a little while ago that was released. So that What's was the cool Wasp too. one? I don't know the Wasp track, but I'd be very yeah. curious to... Yeah, not yeah, top of my head. I'm, be interesting. Mm, I'm sure I went through the I email. I'm I want to be somebody. Maybe. Yeah. It, they could cool. do, but the thing is, I reckon they'd make like where Wasp is more menacing in general. I reckon they'd make it a bit more fun. These guys, yeah. I don't know. But that said, the man behind the mask was pretty faithful. So that was well done. Yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to see these guys take on a Wasp song. I want to see how they do it. If they go actually down the line, just be you know a bit more um, direct with it, or if they try and make it more of their own. It'd be really interesting. But we'll see what they do yeah. with that one. Um, all right, what do we got here? Some comments. So Sally's gone, had a quick listen, a bit of a throwback to the 80s. Yep, that's definitely the case. Yep. It's a universal thing with that one. And Andrew Marshall over on YouTube, good to see you here, buddy. He's gone, Dave needs high-dose vitamin B to repel mozzies. Tested in my young adult <laughs> years camping. Uh, mozzies will get close and then go to the next person. All right, cool. There you go. Yeah. I'm attempting uh, to do the same thing with alcohol. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that earlier on. We think that the booze sort of keeps them away as we get older. So they don't, they don't uh, bother us as much as when we were kids. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see how Dave gets eaten alive tonight or not. Here's so far, a question. So good. Yeah, so far, so good. We'll see. If I see you get the lighter out, I know you're in trouble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. DB is asking a question that we get asked a lot of in this, and that is how can one become a panelist on the show? And the answer is there is no real answer to that question. Um, <laughs> Pretty much the more you hang around, the more you interact, the better your chances are. It's not about um, anything more than just genuinely being the right person versus being quote-unquote a professional. This we, we pride ourselves on the group we've got and the chemistry we've got. And before anyone else sort of comes into that, we take a lot of time to really sort of make sure that person fits in to the vibe. Dave, it took you a while to jump in there and you were doing work before that even happened with the radio station we used to run. Yeah. Um, our latest edition is TC, Tim C, and, and that's because we all know him outside of just doing this as well. So it's kind of like getting to know us as people is probably the best way 
to give yourself a shot. Otherwise, what you can do is if you go high enough on our Patreon page, there is a way to sort of get involved in some special stuff here and there. So, but that's up to you if you want to go down that path as well. So those are the two options. You can be really, really fucking patient and get to know us as people <laughs> or um, or go onto Patreon and have a crack there. One percent uh, question mark. Ah, oh, jeez, I don't know. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know. What, there's really, there's really no answer to this, is there, Dave? You you've been around the longest now, aside from me. There's just no answer to this question, is there? We no, haven't got a everyone's message. journey's been different. Yeah. Um, Nikki joined us. She was a managing of a band to start with, and then yeah. she got into the thing from there. Um, what else? Brendan filled in for a Halloween one once and never looked back. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mick got thrown in the deep end for a Pantera special at a live event. So Mick got yep. really thrown in the deep end and then he, he never looked back after that. So it's it's really just try and hang around and, and see how you go. I, I, I'm not going to make any promises to anyone ever in this regard. It's just it, it just it's a completely organic process. There's no rhyme, rule or whatever for it. So uh, that's the best I can answer it, unfortunately. It's probably not very clear, but that is the way it is unfortunately lee he's been on the show a couple of times doing some stuff here and there with us which has been cool another one that's gotten to know us but also contributes via patreon so that's the the two ways there but he's gone tc is the top cat and that is exactly his nickname in our chat so <laughs> that's how it works all right one more single to go to before we get down to the discussion points for tonight before we get to the reviews and this is a little band quote unquote called dream widow um <laughs> sally sorry before i do sally's jumped in to say you have to be cute db look at these two Mate, <laughs> i appreciate the kind words <laughs> i'm gonna go straight to dave's head um but... already had. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure if jody was watching she'd be going oh no not again um yeah but i don't tell julia about it <laughs> thanks for the kind words ah, um, another one yeah that's it uh, we do get some interesting comments here and there over the years. And there's a little kiss for us all as well. Love you, Sally. Good to, good to have you. In Thank you. Tonight. Hope you're keeping well too. Um, all right. But, yes, the, the last thing I want to talk about tonight is the latest from Dream Widow, also known as Foo Fighters. Uh, this is Dream Widow, March of the Insane. This is coming up from the Studio 666 album, which I think is due on Feb 25, with, along with a soundtrack. Now, from all reports, there's a full album of this going to be dropped at the same time as the movie, which is really, really interesting. But, Dave, this is not Foo Fighters as you know it. How'd you go? No, yeah, this was actually pretty cool. I mean, mm. if I didn't know it was Foo Fighters, there's no way I could pick them. But mm. Dave Grohl has done metal stuff before. Everyone knows he's a metalhead. He's done ProBot many years mm. ago. So he's jammed with just about everybody. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, as far as the song itself goes, it's pretty cool. The riffs are cool. The solos are cool. I can understand what these what the vocals are. They're, they're yeah. deaf growl, but you know yeah. it's done really well. But um, yeah, overall, it's it's a great marketing idea because I'm curious about this movie. I love horror. I love music. Yes. I love metal. So it all comes together very well. I'm not a massive Foo Fighter fan by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't mm -hmm. hate them. They've got some yeah. good songs. I just wouldn't go out of my way to listen to them. But if they're on. And it's a decent song. I'm not going to turn it off. But, mm. yeah, decent band. And it surprises me that, you know, while Dave Grawl has done a lot of the metal stuff, the other members of the band haven't really explored that avenue as far as I know. And yeah, it's all not... done pretty well. Mm. But, um, you know, if it was going to shock me, I'd be surprised, you know, if, if it was Coldplay that did a metal song, that would surprise <laughs> the hell out of me. So show me that and I'll be surprised. But as far as it goes, yeah, cool song. I'm interested to hear more if they're doing it, and I'll check the movie out as well. Yeah, cool. Now, yeah, this is really old-school thrash. It's being called a death metal song by a lot of media outlets. I wouldn't go down the path of calling this a death metal track. It's just really, really old-school, you know, intense thrash. Uh, Nicole's got a comment here, which actually I'll pull out now. She's gone, this is pretty insane. Sounds a little like creator and destruction. Love, love, love it. So, yes, that is... Uh, that is exactly what it is, pretty much. It is from that era. If you like the old school, you know, not your mainstream thrash that you got from, you know, the the, the Seattle scene kind of thing. You go more the European style. It does tie into that a lot more, which I think is it's really cool. It's well done. Uh, it's got some nice intensity. The the darkness in the lyrics is really cool, um, and it tells a story. It, it does fit in. You can because the story behind this is that you know the, the premise of the whole thing is that some dude moves into a house and finds this old tape of an album that wasn't finished or wasn't released from a band and shit goes pear-shaped demon gets released and so on and so forth and 
this song, when you listen to it, if you know the premise of what's going on with the Studio 666 film, it fits that. This is like a Blair Witch Project for Thrash. And so it, it, it gives you that impression from the song right from the start. So if you like your old school Thrash, and, and even if you do or don't like Foo Fighters, just want to check out because it doesn't say anything like Foo Fighters at all. But that, it just sounds like a good old school Thrash song from, you know, maybe the mid to late 80s you'd put it at kind of thing. It just sounds like yeah. it's, been, it's been dusted off from, you know, a couple of decades ago and it sounds fucking great. So if they're going to do an album of this, or oh, they are, yeah. you know, if, if I'm, I'm going to be very, very keen to check it out because I want to see how it stacks up, knowing that it's a quote-unquote modern going back to the old days. I want to see how they do that across an album. This song has got me more than a little bit intrigued. So, yeah, very, very keen to um, check out more from this, you know, quote-unquote side, pro side project. So, yeah, very, very cool. Uh, Lee has gone, Grohl apparently releasing a metal album next week under the Dream Widow moniker to coincide with this new flick. Yep, that's exactly the case as far as I can tell as well. Andrew has gone, I'm looking forward to the Foo Fighters movie. We'll check out the song later. Cool. Good to see you. Let us know how you go with that. Uh, Nicole is saying the movie looks kind of dark yet silly and funny all at the same time. There's always been a tongue in cheek with Foo Fighters, so that's <laughs> all you want from the, the classic horror stuff. And Sally's gone, yes, it's pretty savage. My kind of metal in my ears pricked up in the first second. Eight out of ten, yay. So we found one for Sally there too, so we saved the best for last. Awesome. Cool. All righty. On to a couple of discussion points before we get to our overrated, underrated game for tonight. First things first, I'm going to. Uh, Dennis has actually sent me a message today going, Hey, can you plug this gig? So I'm going to do that now. Um, Dennis is now with this big project, this big band thing called the Arthur Shockers, where they do a whole bunch of covers and have a lot of fun at a whole lot of venues across town. And uh, they're doing a charity event on uh, April 15th, the Friday, the April 15th, uh, at the Bendigo Hotel uh, in Collingwood. So it's the Bendigo Hotel in Collingwood in Melbourne. Uh, you've got the Aftershockers Volume 5. Um, you got DJ Slatanics, Eat the Damn Orange. They're good friends, Eat the Damn Orange, which we know them very well. They're going to be there. Rawtism. So, Keith, if you're watching, give us a, a shout out. Katana Cartel, also good fan, good friends of ours here as well. And the Cigarillos are another band too. So, it's a cracking fucking lineup there. Uh, it's all to go to uh, helping victims of sexual assault and domestic violence. It's a charity called Thinking of You. So that is what that is all about. So get on down. I don't know. Uh, $20 for tickets. There we go. Uh, and $25 on the door if you leave it a bit later on. So to reiterate, Friday, April 15th, the Aftershockers Volume 5, Thinking of You Charity Fundraiser. Uh, it is the Aftershockers, which is a big, massive super group of uh, Melbourne artists getting together and playing a whole bunch of 80s and 90s tunes. Uh, all rock and metal related, obviously. Then you've got Eat the Damn Orange, Rawtism, The Cigarillos, and Katana Cartel. So it is an awesome, awesome lineup. I'm going to try this and copy-paste the link into the comments now. So hopefully you can get there and check it out on uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitch, uh, showing those ones there too. All righty, what do we got here? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll get to those in a second. But that's what's coming up on that day. So that's the first one of those things to check out. So please do check it out. $20 for tickets beforehand, $25 on the door on the night. And now that capacities are all lifted, no excuses. Get out there, get amongst it, have some fun with it, folks. It'll be a good night, great lineup. All right, what else we got here? So ah, our good friend Carl, um, String Theory Studio. Now that Dave mentioned it, I wouldn't mind hearing Coldplay try to cover this track. <laughs> there we go. That's another one there. That would be fun. Uh, and uh, Nicole has agreeing with Sally there too with the, uh, the 80s metal stuff there. Lee has gone dent in Lycra. Say it ain't so. I'm not going to <laughs> deny that because I don't know. <laughs> All right. A couple of other little bits and pieces I want to talk about here tonight. Uh, if you're a fan of Russia's Alex Lifeson, uh, this might intrigue you a little bit. He's got a new project now, which is called Envy of None, which is a different pro Do not think Rush when you listen to this. It's nothing like Rush. Uh, but it's an interesting little project nonetheless. Uh, there is a single and stuff out there now. I think it's oh, – fuck, hang on. It's here on the page. and I'm going to – Liar is the single that's out now if you want to check it out. Uh, but yeah, in April, they're releasing their debut album. It's self-titled, so Envy of None is the band and the album title as well. They're going to release that in April. And to celebrate this debut release from this group, uh, if you buy the, which one is it? Um, the Deluxe Edition. If you, if you buy, purchase the physical copy of the Deluxe Edition, there'll be a QR code. So think of, you know, Willy Wonka and that, you know, golden ticket kind of stuff. You scan the QR code and if you win, 
you will get a, uh, what is it? A Alex Lifeson Access Standard Signature Les Paul guitar worth something like 900 US, I think it is. So that is a very cool giveaway uh, coming up in April. Rush guitarist Alex Lifeson, get one of his customized guitars. So there you go. That's something a bit different there. We haven't spoken about that one. So what do you think about that, Dave, as a, as a concept? Yeah, it's a pretty cool idea. It's a bit of an old school incentive to actually buy physical media and a great way mm. to get some publicity for his new project. But you know, having worked in retail for a long time, I know that when stock gets damaged, it just gets written off and thrown in the bin. So mm. more than likely the, the, the one of the actual golden ticket, the QR code, is just going to get tossed. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's going to be a shame. But, yeah, this is a cool idea. And, you know, Rush and me don't get along, but I like Alex. He's a, he's a good guitar player. I like their yeah. music, not the vocals, as we know. That's been covered. Yeah. But, yeah, I wouldn't mind winning a $900 guitar. That'd be cool. And all for the cost of buying a CD, you know, physical media is the way. But mm -hmm. yeah, your album seems worth checking out. I'd give it a listen and yeah, mm. it would work. I might buy it so I can try win a guitar. Cool <laughs> idea. <laughs> Carl's coming with a comment here. He's gone, the losers don't get the guitar, they get Coldplay's last album. So <laughs> <laughs> that's just cruel and unusual punishment, Carl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's mean i like it i think it's a good idea i think it's really really unique uh we don't get a lot of stuff like this and, and especially now these days with the qr code thing that everyone's used to using it mm. it's not a bad idea at all so i think yeah well done well played the the track liar is nothing like rush it's much more moody and, and atmospheric kind of stuff it's a different thing entirely but yeah i, I do i do enjoy i didn't mind it it's female fronted vocal stuff too so it's a very it's an entirely different feel uh, I don't know if you've checked out the single Liar, Dave, have you or not? Or... I no, not yet. We'll check it out. It's different. So it's, yeah, if you, it's a bit of a darker sort of thing, but it's also got, you know, electronic elements. I'm not sure how you go with it, but we'll see how we go. Um, but, yeah, I didn't mind it. it it's it, I mean, it, I'm intrigued about the release coming up in April. I think it's mid-April from memory, but I might be wrong on that one. Um, Nicole has responded to Carl by saying, huh, that would put me off buying and scanning. So <laughs> if Coldplay was the <laughs> consolation prize. I don't blame you. Probably put me off as well. All right. One last thing here I'm going to try and get through. Uh, our good friends over at Golden Robert Records, and no, this is not pay promotion at all. This is just you know, finding stuff to talk about. Um, they're doing a little competition called Don't Waste Any More Time. It's a singles competition. Uh, so basically you enter this for your chance to win a singles deal with Golden Robot Records. Uh, the way it works, it's all to celebrate 10,000 subscribers to Jason Green's YouTube channel, Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I haven't watched it. I don't know what it's about, but there we go. Um, Golden Robot Records is holding a singles competition for all bands and artists to take part in. Uh, how it works is using the link. So go to Golden Robots, uh, Golden Robot Records via their website, any of their socials. Golden Robot Records is how you just find these guys. Uh, if you go to the link on their socials, then enter your single to Golden Robot Records to be assessed and judged. Your single will be judged by a panel of famous musicians and narrowed down to a top 10. The winner will be, will be announced via a live stream on Jason Green's YouTube channel, Wasting Time with Jason Green. And the winner will also will then receive their single distributed worldwide through Golden Robot Records, including a marketing and PR campaign, an exclusive interview with Jason Green and Mark Alexander, who is the run, runner of the whole Golden Robot empire, and uh, an exclusive Golden Robot Records merch pack on top of it all. So uh, to get into it, there's a few hoops you've got to jump through if you're a band interested in this one, but you've got to go... Um, You've got to subscribe to Jason Green's YouTube channel. You've got to follow Golden Robot Records on Facebook and Instagram and then use the uh, link there to fill in your details after that. So that's an interesting little concept there. What do you think of that one, Dave? Yeah, I think it's a cool idea. I mean, any yeah. avenue a band can use to get their music out is certainly worth following up. And, um, yeah, as you said, you know, to get the PR cam campaign, I think there's an interview and a merch pack. So it's, it's a decent prize. You get your music. Um, yeah. published and yeah, it's pretty cool but the, the golden robot have quite a diverse list of artists so it can appeal to yeah. quite a few different types of people so if you know someone in the band or if you're in a band yourself well worth hitting up because yeah i think it's a cool idea yeah no i, I like it and, and it's not just for rock and metalheads out there too because yeah golden robot have a lot of uh, different uh, categories going on there and for what it's worth we do get the promotional side inboxes, um, like the emails that come through to us from the Golden Robert Records uh, tribe, and they do a great job on that side of things. There's a whole lot that goes into they. They've got all the contacts, not just us. There's a whole wide range of people out there, and it's worldwide as well. So it's a good chance to get your song into as many ears as possible. I'm not sure about all the fine details with the T's and C's, but, you know, you, if you read up on that sort of stuff, then you'll do your due diligence. But, yeah, this was – I think it's a really cool 
incentive. And knowing the guy's a golden robot, I think it's a, you know, they have their heart in the right place all the time. So I can't see anything wrong with this at all. I think it's a great idea and a great concept. If you can get into it, then awesome. They're not asking the whole thing where, I mean, I don't know what happens when it gets to the top 10, but at least in the beginning phase, it's not like where you get all those other competitions where vote for us, vote for us. And it's all just the viral social marketing campaign. It's nothing like that at all. They're going to get it assessed by a panel, which is a better way to do things in my mind. And then from there, we'll see what happens when the top 10 get announced. But I think it's a cracking idea. If you're in a band, you want to get a chance to get your single out there, why not give it a go? Uh, you've got nothing to lose anyway. So have a crack and see what happens. Um, but I do know they do good things on the, if you can win it and you get the PR campaign, that would be, you know, worth it for because you get a lot of the same emails as me, don't you, Dave? So yeah, so, there's a lot to come through. Yeah. yeah. So that's definitely worth your time because they will set up a release date and then they give you a lot of pre warning. And then once it's out, they, you know, post it a few times off. So yeah, you got a, you get a fair bang for quote unquote buck, even though you're not paying for it this time around. So, you know, there you go. As far as I'm aware. Um, <laughs> so uh, Danny's jumped in on Facebook saying, hey, all good to see you. Thanks for yeah. joining us again. Awesome. And uh, Dean has gone, need more of these types of things to happen, especially for younger local bands trying to push for a deal. And I, I agree with that. What I like about this one is that it sounds more like it's going to be on merit versus your social media, who's got the most likes kind of thing. So you, know, you get 10 musicians to listen to a song and pick the ones they like the most. I think, you know, maybe from there I go to a popular contest, but at least get to that top 10. You're getting people in the industry to hear your stuff. It's a, it's a pretty good chance to get heard by people that wouldn't hear it any other way. So they're well connected. It's well worth a look. So... What it's worth, have a crack. Um, all righty. Time for a bit of overrated, underrated. And uh, this is a bit of fun. We haven't done an overrated, underrated for a little while. So I figured we bring this one back because I've had a few, uh, what they're called is playthrough videos. If you know what they are, then I'm not. I'm probably going to bore you for a minute here. But if you don't know what they are, what a playthrough video is, is basically a band releases a single or a video or whatever else have you. And then they have a thing called a playthrough video where they'll focus on the bass, the drums, the guitars, vocals, whatever else have you. It's, it's, um, they find an individual or a section of the band to focus on and they video them doing their stuff to the song. And usually the mix is different to accent that stuff being put through. So the idea here is for us to sit there and go, is it overrated? Is it underrated? Or is it about right? So Dave, where do you land on these ones? This is cool. I think it's underrated. But mm. I literally only just found out that it wasn't a thing that when you put it into tonight's plans. Because I've seen videos like this. I didn't know there was actually a thing called instrument playthrough. I just knew that occasionally a band would do this. Mm. Now that I know it's a thing, I hope that it catches off, catches on, and a lot of other people do it. Because yeah. whatever instrument you prefer, if you play an instrument or you just appreciate one, it's cool to just see a very cool close up of what the musician's doing. Yeah. Especially because you know, there's a lot of tablature sites out there. A lot of them aren't 100 percent accurate. Yeah, and if you if you get a good shot and you're quick, you can actually see and figure it out. So, and plus, even if you're not a musician, it's just cool to see the process of a musician just yeah. playing their instrument. You know, it, whether it's drums, bass, guitar, keys, or whatever yeah. you prefer. Yeah. It's just yeah. cool to get that close up and watch the musician playing that, and everything's just mixed, so you can hear that part. So, I mm. think these are cool, and I hope it becomes more of a thing than it is now. Yeah. I'm with you. I think it's incredibly underrated. Um, I think that it's, it's a once the song is out, usually that kind of is the end of it until you keep promoting it. If you do things like playthrough videos, like the, I get a lot of them through different labels sending stuff all the time because it is a new way to sort of you know keep things going on. But for example, Voyager, uh, who are now competing to get into uh, Eurovision uh, in a couple of weeks, I think their little competitions going on. Um, or is it next week maybe? It's very soon now. Um, but they've released the track Dreamer, and now they've got, like, playthroughs for the drums, for the guitars, and I think they've got another one which I haven't actually watched yet, but for the vocals and that as well. So, it, like, it, it's a really, really cool idea. And I think that you mentioned tablature before, but I think that's, like, an actually an untapped kind of a mark of a band to release their own tablature or, or sheet yeah. music, whatever you want to put it as. It's another merch item you can get your head around. And if you do playthrough videos along with, you know, yeah. pay or whatever, you know, it could be a Patreon thing, it could be whatever. But if you can release a tab with a playthrough video, mm -hmm. that's a really cool way to get your, your, your fan base engaged. Um, but also it keeps songs viable too, especially if you're changing the mix. So if you, I know it's a different process to go through to change the mix, but if you're able to do it, if you're able to afford it or you're able to actually execute it yourself, if you can bring the instrument that's being played up into focus more, I think it's a fantastic way to do it because especially because I love them actually. I'm not, 
we've joked a few times now that I'm black metal curious, but I really like those playthrough videos on those black metal songs because you usually mix the vocals back, which means you really get to focus on what's being played. And mm. it's really intriguing just what they do with that stuff. So I think this is incredibly underrated. I would like to see more of this sort of stuff. I think it's a great way to give songs more life um, because it's something you can share on social all the time too. And then people love that kind of stuff. So I think it's a great thing. Uh, so hopefully we get more of it because bands are getting a little more savvy with these devices and filming stuff for themselves and all that kind of stuff now too. I think that you're going to see more of this because it is, if you're going to be in the studio anyway, you may as well film it being done and then you can get your play through video and it's yeah. knocked over. So I think it's a great concept. And I think it's not new, new, but it's start, starting to get a bit more momentum and I would like to see a lot more of it. So there we go. I think it's cool. Um, yeah, both in agreement. So I think that's the first time we both agreed <laughs> whether something I think, it is too. I think it's the first time i actually agreed so that, that, there we go um danny's gone i love them learned heaps that way and that's exactly one of the things too if you're a fan it's a great way to learn the songs i really do think it's a great way to engage with your fan base uh rowan says yeah love these playthroughs so they're winning so far nicole has gone best looks them up i've never heard of this concept what a great idea yeah they're cool nicole i really do enjoy them and Dean has gone learning some rhythm guitar and learned a lot of playing through the track with someone covering the song, etc. Great thing. Um, so there we go. Uh, what else we got here? So Carl's gone. Would you watch a Coldplay playthrough though? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> there is still going to be some elements of taste involved in mm -hmm. it. Um, Carl, would you? There we go. Uh, so, and Darren's gone sumo psycho. I've done a couple of these really cool. So, I think they're a winner. I think generally across the board, they're overlooked. And I think more of them is a better way to do it. Like I said, it's a, a way to breathe new life into something you've done before. And you think about it, you could go if a, a band like Metallica wanted to go back and do old songs and just keep things going, you could watch, you know, the guitarists or, you know, Lars or whoever you want, you know, jokes aside or not, but the old metal bands could really just hone in this and just they take five years to do albums anyway, so it's a good way to keep that sort of stuff going. People too, cool. so that would be. And when really the cool. individual streams leaked on YouTube when Guitar Hero came out, everyone just jumps yeah. on cool. Mm. Master of Puppets, guitar only. It's like mm -hmm. oh, little little parts that you get lost in the mix. It's like fuck, yeah. that sounds cool. It's like hearing That's the whole great. song for the first time. Yeah, exactly. And you get to pull, like, they, if, especially if you change the mix, and that's the important part. You don't have to strip everything out, but if you can just put the, keep the drums and guitars up front, if it's a, if it's a, one of those two playthroughs, you can pull the bass and the vocals back, you know, that sort of stuff would be really, really cool to see what they would do with it. But yeah, I reckon it's a great idea. Uh, Dean's asked, would Dave watch a Silent Skies playthrough? <laughs> um, oh, I don't know what would be more depressing. <laughs> uh, um, Carl, Carl is going to win their last album if I did watch it. So there we go. Carl, <laughs> if you want their last album? Fuck, by all means. Well, I'm sure we can sort of work something out for you in that regard. Um, Nicole has gone no Coldplay or YouTube in any shape or form. And uh, Dean also says, I would love Metallica or ACDC doing this. I think there's a yeah. lot of in this for, for the old bands and a lot of oh, them. man. Especially hearing Malcolm stuff just isolated. Yeah. Sweet. That would be fucking cool. All righty. Um, let's get into our first. Sorry, my table's moving because the dog is trying to get my attention <laughs> and the size of a horse. Um, yeah, for those that are playing along at home, there's a, there's a dog going on. I can't get him there. All right. I'm not going to pull cables all over the joint. There is a great big fucking dog, a great Dane, which is in my lap with his head while I'm on a stool. Um, but anyway, radio Caesar, lie down. <laughs> He's just looking at me going, I want to go outside now. It's like, nope, you can stay in here. All righty. So our first album review tonight is Aussie Band, the Neptune Power Federation. So for your enjoyment, there is a reference track to check out here. This is the Neptune Power Federation, and the reference track is my precious one. If you're watching on Channel 31 in Melbourne, this got a run. Uh, if you're watching on Channel 44 in Album, sorry, on Channel 44 in Adelaide, fuck me, um, it'll be on this Thursday night coming up. Uh, so, yes, Neptune Power Federation, my precious one. It's in the comments. It's in the description box. Uh, just back onto things quickly here, though. Dean has gone, just to hear Malcolm play through old Die Happy, biggest inspiration ever for me. Yeah, I think there'd be a few people in that boat as well. Was well, there anything else you did want to add there, Dave, before we do more, move on to the reviews? I've just sort of kept going. There. No, no, I'm good. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> All right, cool. So, yes, there's your reference track. Please do check that out while we move on to our first of three reviews tonight. So this is the Neptune Power Federation with Le Demon de Lamour. 
Uh, eight tracks, 39 minutes, the fifth studio album from the Sydney band, released February 2022 via Cruise Del Sur Music. Recorded at the Ped Food Factory in Marrickville, mixed by Clem Bennett. Three singles have been released, including Emmeline and My Precious One. The third single is We Beast of the Night, and that features a guest spot from Chris Penny of Private Function. Overall, this is something of a super group uh, put together by Jay Wally of Friends of Rom, and this album sees the band trying to reclaim the love song territory left behind by other bands playing it far too safe is the uh, bio for this one. Dave, how did you go? Yeah, this was pretty cool. It took a, it took a little bit to get, like, get into what they were doing because it changed as it went along. But it's an unusual name for a band for starters. Mm. I wasn't sure what to expect when I first put this on. It kept me guessing because there's a few different gear changes. And once you know, once you're thinking that they, you know what they're doing, they throw something different. Like the opening track is kind of, it's Weeping on the Morn. It's an eight minute epic with lots of different sections. Bit psychedelic, bit prog, bit classic rock. And the second track has a bit more of a punk vibe. Um, My Precious One. That's got a very, very cool guitar solo in it. So I'm like, okay, is it punk? But they're doing cool guitar solos. They're doing psychedelic long songs. They're doing shorter songs. Then the third track comes on, and it's very funky. Like it's a lot of mm. upbeat, groovy energy happening with that. Um, baby, you're mine. That song is really infectious. That was really cool. So, in the yeah. space of three songs, we've got four or five different styles, and tempos, and song lengths. And just like, okay, this band's definitely got my attention. Um, the one constant through all these songs was the lyrics. They were great. There's a mm. lot of cool stories being told, and they're done really well. And they, whatever style the music is, it's kind of fits the theme of the song that's got of the lyrics of the story that's being told. So I thought that mm. was cool. Let's change things up. Yeah. The song um, "Loving You" is killing me. That put me in mind of Black Sabbath. It's very heavy, yeah. pacey, mm -hmm. riff-driven rock. I mean, what 50 years after Sabbath, and it's still an influence mm -hmm. on bands. This is that's very cool. Yeah. And then in the middle of that, you got a nice little acoustic interlude which is also kind of Sabbathy because they did the quiet, they did the light and shade, but yeah, this is very well done. Uh, Emmeline, that song was pretty cool. It starts yeah. out old school rock song and it has quieter moments in the middle and then you got these really slow pick scrapes and there's some spoken word in there. And mm. I'm not sure if it goes into Latin or if it's reverse vocals reverse or if there's vocal. some effect on it. It, sound, yeah. it sounds very ominous because it goes from normal to mm. something different, but it's seamless. It's a little bit creepy, but you yeah. know, it's not really there's there's evil bands out there, but there's some evil vibes and menace throughout. You kind of forget yeah. that until they, they just, like bring it in. And I think mm. the, the album artwork and the title sets that up, but then they go into different territories and when it comes back, it's just like, Yeah, that's really well done. Um, yeah. I like the spoken word intro to We the Beast of Night. Yeah. And I probably wouldn't have picked it if we hadn't covered Meatloaf a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. But yeah. Right from the start, I took the words right out of my mouth. And it's just mm -hmm. like, this is pretty, it's not word for word, but just the concept and the execution. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, I like this. It was a good homage to it. But then it goes mm -hmm. into a completely different type of song and starts off as an acoustic ballad. Um, uh, What's it called? Uh, we the Beast of Night. It starts off yeah. as an acoustic ballad and then it rocks up as it develops. And it's really yeah. dramatic how it unfolds. Mm -hmm. um, never heard of this band before, but I do want to hear more from them. Um, the yep. singer's got a great voice, guitar work is cool, solos were great, you know, it ticks all the right boxes for me. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure what to think when I started, when, when it first put on, but yeah, yeah. it won me over. Okay, at uh, 10, uh, my precious one, baby of mine, loving you is killing me, and Emmeline were my standouts. Nice. All right. Um, for me, the band, like the, we've got a publicist who sent it through to us as well, so big thanks to for pursuing it, make sure we did cover it. We've covered a talk about singles a couple of times and, and played on the show, and now we're going to review the album. For me, this is a pretty bloody cool release. Something different about this band, and they stand out because they're not quite like anything else that we talk about. There's, still, there's a lot of rock, a lot of, you know, doom, fuzz, stoner kind of elements in this, but there's all the funk elements too. There's a lot going on, but it's cool to get a band that isn't willing to isn't afraid to take a risk. And that's what they've done with this album. Every song is different. They've got a little theme going on, but everything is different. No two songs are alike, which is really, really cool. Um, they've got some real groove on this one, some psychedelic touches here. How they use space on this one is really cool. That brought the right amount of flow and drama to this album overall. It opened with the longest track on the album and closed with the second longest track on the album, which is a really you know, unique thing. You don't get that very often. That was a nice little touch there too. 
But you've got great grunt, great riffs on this one. Tracks like My Precious One. I love the bite in that one in particular. But after that, you've got that funk-driven song, Baby, Your Mind. It doesn't get you moving. Fuck me. You must have made a stone. Like, it is so much groove. And the hook in the chorus is phenomenal. It's not strictly, quote-unquote, hard rock. But fuck, it's a cracking song. Um, under all this, you've got, you know, old school stoner and, and doom sort of rock elements in there with, with a classic rock bass under it too. The vocals are phenomenal on this one. Everything is so well written and performed. There's something here for everyone. If you don't like one song, move to the next one and you'll probably like that one. And they all fit together, which is really cool too. It's very hard to do this mm. and pull it off the way they pulled it off. But they've made every song different and made them all fit, which is cool. Uh, I love the mix on this. Some really nice use of panning, but the overall mix is just, you know, get solid tones, you know, get a bit of punch going on. But, you know, everything is just mixed just right kind of thing for this one. So you can hear everything with crystal clarity. Uh, but even the fuzzy kind of tones work well on this one. Those guitars buzz away while the the bass and the drums and the vocals really cut through all that really clearly. Um, what else we got here? If you miss Jackson Firebird, there's a track on here for you. Uh, Loving You Is Killing Me is a prime example of that sort of Jackson Firebird vibe, and I really enjoyed that too. And uh, Emmeline's Black Sabbath vibe as well. So there we go. This has everything in a 40-minute listen. It's fucking fantastic. Great composition, great track order. Uh, the the things like bass, haunting vocals, that kind of spooky stuff that you mentioned there before is really well done on here too. Same with the backwards vocal in Emmeline. But I also like the duet, the touch, the duet of the last track, um, very Meatloaf-esque, you know, We Beast of the Night. That duet between the vocals, male and female, not only spoken part at the start, but throughout the whole song was incredibly well done. It was a great way to close the record and a nice little bit of theatre to tack on to the end of it all. Um, there's just great writing performances and drama in this one. If you, you know... If you want something a bit more fun and boppy, the, sac the song Madly in Love is cool as well. These guys aren't afraid of taking any risks, like I said before, and, and I don't know, I like what they've done with this one. Uh, different release, really did enjoy, and it's nice to get something different because we get a lot of bands that sound like other bands. This one's like, okay, this is a bit trickier, the pigeonhole, and I like having one that does that to me. This is a really good listen from start to finish. I did enjoy it a lot. I gave this a 9 out of 10. I fucking loved it. Uh, my precious one, Emmeline and Baby, or mine are my three standouts, but there's no dud moments on this at all. This is a great listen from start to finish. So, yeah, please do check this one out. For a Sydney band, they have fucking knocked it out of the park. So, yeah, get on the locals, help them out. Um, got some comments coming through on this one too, which is nice. Nicole oh. said, this would sound amazing if it was in a power metal way. These are the sort of <laughs> songs that translate to pretty much any genre too, I reckon. Like you could write, take these songs and just shift them into yeah. whatever mode you wanted to. It would work well. Uh, Danny's gone, that's kick ass, slightly died pretty ish. Okay, great vocalist, killer bass tone, very nice. Uh, Leah said, a retro rock delight, some elements of funk with some soaring guitar solos. Yes, there's lots of that there too. Sally's gone, if I only listen to this one quickly and only the one song, but I liked it, if this band started playing at the pub, it'd be good. So that's cool as well. Uh, Darren on YouTube says, yep, this is a must buy, awesome. And uh, Danny also says, would be good at the pub, I'd go. And Aaron over on YouTube is going, bloody wood. If you like Bloody Wood, tune in on Thursday. We're going to talk about yep. them then. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be interesting, that one. So, yeah, that'll be Thursday. We'll talk about Bloody Wood. So, there you go. You're getting a, a bit of a, a teaser out of us there for um, jumping in there and giving us a comment. So, thanks for joining us. Hopefully, you're enjoying the show. All right, next review, second last one. All righty. Pike versus the Automason uh, is the band. The reference track is Alien Slut Mum. Uh, so the band is Pike versus the Automaton. The song is Alien Slut Mum. Uh, there is a link for this in the comments, and the link is also in the description box. So please do check it out and uh, let us know what you think of it as well. Uh, Danny has also said here that Bloody Wood are fucking insane. Yes, we've we're looking for. I'm looking forward to reviewing that one. That's going to be an interesting mm. one. To see how it goes, but um, you reckon you'll be able to do that one day? Yeah, I reckon I'll be able to jump in. All right, cool. That'll be that'll be cool. All righty, but that's Thursday. Let's do this other one tonight. Let's get on to uh, Pike versus the Automaton, uh, self-titled album, 10 tracks, 62 minutes, the debut solo album from Mike Pike of Sleep and High on Fire, released February 2022 via MNRK Records, produced by Bill Anderson, written with drummer John Reed. Two singles have been released in Alien Slut Mum and Land, uh, with the latter featuring a guest spot from Brent Hines from Mastodon. Uh, there's a heap of other guest spots on this one, so there's like heaps. I'm not going to list them all. Uh, Got to give a special shout out to Lee, who's with us tonight. So this is for you, buddy. And uh, also John Howarth for sending this one through to us. Uh, so we got the label and Lee giving us a shout out. So that's why we uh, decided to go ahead and give this one a crack. So how'd you go with this one, Dave? Yeah, it took a 
little while to get into and it mm. changes a lot much like the previous album we just reviewed there's a lot of once you kind of think you know what's happening they throw a curveball at you and mm. the band itself is very raw and the production is very raw as well mm. but you can hear a lot of good riffs and melodies going on just they, they think they're just stuck with a no frills production and presentation just to let the music speak for itself yeah but um, on that level it really works um Vocals, I cannot understand a single word he's saying. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah. The guitar solos are awesome. That for each song, that kind of what stuck out for me. Yeah. And the second track, uh, "Throat Cobra," is one of the most unusual guitar tones I've ever think I've ever heard. Okay. It's really, really buzzy, and mm. I don't know if I don't know if it it kind of worked against the vocals. They weren't really gelling together. I don't know if that was the effect they were going for. If it was, they achieved it. But it's like one's there, one's at a different vocals mm. that are different, guitars are different. It just didn't sit good for me. It's just a question of taste. But um, I think yeah, I think it's intentional. It's one of those things to do for that genre of music where because I, I, it's a thing where the guitars and the vocals sit in the same frequency response range, range, and so yeah, it's it's an interesting one to. If you don't sort of play with things a bit, the guitar will drown out the vocals, and they've allowed that to happen on this album. So I think it's intentional. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, very, very raw and basic um, yeah. presentation here. But, you know, there's a couple of long songs here, and they're a lot slower than some of the other ones. They're more riff-driven, psychedelic stoner rock. So when mm. you think you, you pigeonhole them as like a heavier, fast band, they throw in these really long epics. I mean, the, um, what are they called? Trapped in a Mid-Cave, Alalong, yeah. and um, The Wars of Woe. Very, yep. very droning, very, very long tracks. And th those were kind of easier to listen to. And then they throw in the song Land, which is the one with the yeah. with Brent from Mastodon. And that's just yeah. really, really change of pace. It's really slow. But um, yeah. it's an unusual album. And if you're after something different, a little more diverse, but you're tasting more towards the darker and thrashier side, then you'll probably find something on here to like. Um, I'm not sure if I like this or not. It's yeah. interesting. I gave it seven and a half out of ten. But um, I can hear – I've listened to enough music to be able to distinguish the – what they're doing, but yeah, <laughs> I prefer stuff with cleaner production. Yeah, so once again, it comes down to taste, but it's there. This band can certainly play, they can write songs, and there's a few different styles. But, mm. um, yeah, so seven and a half out of ten, and Land was the standout for me. That was a good one, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm similar to you. This one was a bit more of a struggle to get into. It's not an immediately grabbing release, and the fact that it's a longer one too, it's 62 minutes, it doesn't really help either. Um, and it's probably the one, I don't know if this is like the one and only album he plans on doing as a solo project. And, and, you know, whatever. You do what you want to do when it comes to this. He's got his other projects and they're going great guns. So you can do whatever he wants with this. But um, just from a pure listening point of view, it's it's one of those ones where you can listen to it quite easily. It's fine. It's easy to get through all sorts of stuff. But trying to distinguish individual moments that really grab your attention, like we do with highlighting certain tracks on every album we listen to, it's harder to do it with this one. I think the reason why Land jumps out is because it is so different to the rest of the album. Yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, you've got different things in the composition and that that make the songs interesting as an individual one. And that all helps the album flow as well. But from the overall pacing of the album, I didn't find it moved a hell of a lot. Like there are some differences there. But, you know, compare this to the next one or the album before this one, you know, uh, it, <laughs> It's by comparison, is much more of a flat line. If if you like, you know, fuzzy hot mixes, you're definitely going to enjoy this one. If you're a big fan of the stone rock genre, then this is going to be one that you're going to love for sure. Uh, but if you're not a fan of that kind of thing, if you're not into doom or stone rock, this isn't going to do a lot for you. Uh, I thought there was some clever use of foley in this one, which is cool. And this is why, again, I think all the production is definitely intentional because everything else is done very, very well. Uh, so in terms of production, it's well executed for what's going on here. There's nothing really clean or pure in this in the vocals. It's just, you know, rough and ready. There's a bit of gruffness about this one, which is cool. It's, it's aggressive. It's got a really sludgy metal kind of st stone rock vibe sort of meshing in the middle there. The whole thing does that one. I think the vocals being back a bit sort of worked for the style of music. I, I get what you mean by it's not quite personally to taste, but I think it works. It's what you want from this genre. Um... But there's also little things, little details on this one, like there's some rhythm sticks being used, and they're sort of hard panned left in the song Trapped in a Mid Cave. Uh, so there's lots of attention to detail. So if you are into this genre of music, there's going to be lots of ear candy for you to go and find within it because there's a fair bit of layering going on with all that sort of stuff too. 
like I said, the, the track Land is probably that one in the middle of the album thereabouts where you sit there and go, wow, okay, there's your sort of you know, island in the middle of all this stuff. And that is just like a demented little country tune. It just sort of really <laughs> slows right down and opens right up to lots of twang in it. And it's, it's a different track on this record. But there's a lot of otherwise pretty long, drawn-out stuff on this one. The change in the album comes more from composition than from song to song, like I was saying before. It's worth a listen. Uh, it's worth listening to check it out and take it in at your own pace. I find it, I found it hard to stay really locked in on it. Um, it's not bad. It's all well executed. If you're a fan of the genre, it'll appeal to you. I just don't think that as a casual listener, it does a heap for me to sort of go, okay, I'm going to make sure I go back to this one. It's always worth listening to it, but I'm probably not going to go back again anytime soon kind of thing. So it's well done but it will come down to taste. I gave it a 7 out of 10. Uh, Abusive, the opening track, although that was a really cool one. But also Latin American Geological Foundation. I enjoyed that one too. And Land, just because it was something different to, to pick out there. So that's where I landed with that one. You and I are on the same page. And it looks like a few of the audience are too, because Nicole has gone, it's just noise to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, Danny's gone, yeah, nah, worth an ice pick to the inner ear, not for me. <laughs> so oh, wow. wow. Um, and bell has gone, not really my thing, so I have no idea why I like it so much. Okay, cool. Well, I don't know. Sure. Courses for courses, different things will appeal to different people all the time. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Good to get some balance in the conversation there too, not just having it one way. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. And, yeah, make sure you give us all your thoughts and all these ones as you go along. Anyone out there, if you're tuning in, we love hearing your thoughts and what we're talking about as well. All right, last album to go, and then we'll wrap up and get out of here with a bin and all sort of stuff too. But we're going to go to, well, you know, we do with this show, we change gears all the time. We are definitely about to do that now. Um, oh, hang on, before we do, uh, Lee has gone overly long album, dirty guitar tones and vocals, like I prefer his other projects. And I think that's probably going to be the bottom line for a lot of people out there. But at the same time, it's if you take this as, if this is his one shot of doing a solo album, I don't mind it being long. If he plans on doing another one, he could have held a few of these tracks for a second album in a couple of years kind of thing. So... Depends what he does next. If he releases another album in 12 months, he'll be like, fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it's, you know, the one and only thing for the next five to 10 years, well, then, yeah, do what you want in that regard. It's long, but if it's a one-off, then, yeah, you get your bang for buck there. All righty. Like I was saying, no time for a gear change. Going to go to a little band called Goodbye June, which I was stunned. Their, their Spotify listens are well over half a million a month, which is why they ended up being the main event for tonight. Mm -hmm. because they're just Quite popular, it seems. Uh, so this is Goodbye June, and the song is Three Chords. Now, we've never covered them on the show before. I don't think we've even played a clip or anything from them before on the show. So this is a completely new find, I'm assuming, for both of us, Dave? Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, yes, that's your reference track. The reference track is Goodbye June, Three Chords, in the comments, in the description box. Check it out while we go and talk about the new album from the band. So this is Goodbye June, See Where the Night Goes. 11 tracks for 40 minutes. The third studio album from the Nashville band, released February 2022 by Earache Records, produced by Paul Moak. Uh, five singles have been released from this, including Step Aside and Three Chords. Uh, the band wrote this over the course of the pandemic, and this band had widely regarded as being one of the forefront bands in contemporary rock music. Uh, another one for Lee to get a shout out for, because I wasn't aware of this until he sort of sent it through to us in the Patreon chat that we have going on. So, uh, yeah, a big thanks to Lee for finding it, and we'll uh, give this one a go. So that said, Dave, how was it? Yeah. Thank you, Lee. Uh, I have to admit, I've never heard of this band. And much like Andrew just said, they have um, 658,000 monthly views on Spotify. Yeah. And, yeah, I've never heard of them. So I don't know what rock I've been living under, but these guys are actually really good. And um, I was when I first put it on, the singer reminded me a little bit of Bon Scott. Yeah. And I listened to it over and over. Julia's like, what are you listening to? Oh, it's this band, um, Goodbye June. It's on the review list. She's like, that guy sounds a little bit like Bon Scott crossed <laughs> with Brian Johnson. I'm like, yeah, I, I, get, I get that. A little bit of both in there. But kind of like the best way to describe this band would be ACDC Light. They've got hmm. a lot of things that remind me in parts of what ACDC do, but it's not as distorted, not as loud, not yeah. as ruckus, not as sexist, which was always fun. But, yeah, they got a little bit of that old school – basic rock and roll which is mm -hmm. always good but you know these guys they're not reinventing the wheel but what they're doing they're doing really well and they write really good songs mm. now, they've got really engaging stories in their songs and yeah the singer just relays them really well it's just stuff that you can relate to mm -hmm. you know and 
Definitely. If you nope. need any further proof that it's just basic rock and roll, as Andrew mentioned, the song Three Chords. That's a pretty apt <laughs> yeah. way to sum up pretty much what they do. But, yep. you know, it, there's a lot more going on than just, you know, three chords. They write pretty great melodies, pretty good solos. Solos really fucking cooking. Mm. But it's more to the bluesy side than to the heavy rock side. They do yeah. a lot of what they do. That they're they're loud, they're big, they've got catchy anthems, but they don't rely on heavy distorted guitars or double bass drumming or anything like that. It's more the the, the composition that is dramatic and it gives them mm. a big sound through that. And the soulful vocals. I mean the guy has a lot of passion yeah. into what he's doing, which makes the stories come alive. Anyone can anyone can write some great lyrics, but to make those songs come alive takes a really talented singer. Yeah. There's a lot of swing, a lot of groove and as mentioned, they don't rely on effects to get that across. Yeah. Um, there it there is one little effect I picked up, the old flanger. But it's <laughs> not like a wild flanger like you would get from one of those eighties throwback ones. It's just a little bit in the opening track to step aside. You are obsessed. I love that effect. It's so cool. <laughs> step aside and take a ride. A little bit of flanger, but you know, it's set mellow. It's not like grinding like yeah. nested did yeah. and various other bands so that got my attention that was it those songs have great hooks to them um breathe and attack they have really good structure to um mm. that has really good structure to that song nice little breakdown quiet section in the middle and that's kind of like what reminded me of acdc when yeah. they do high voltage back in the day and they would bring it down really quiet and get the whole crowd singing mm. along but if yeah. you like that type of stuff in composition just you know, it's not a very long song but they just do these little subtle mm. moments and that would be cool yeah. um and I like how it changed. There's a few different gear changes throughout. There's um, what I need, nice little piano ballad. And that's positioned perfectly between take yeah. a ride and stand and deliver. It yeah. Takes it down, brings it back up. The stand and deliver, that's just an instant earworm. Um, this album will grow on you. It will get stuck in your head. You know, you hear it a couple of times and you'll have to come back and hear it some more. And I think if they came over here, they'd do really well with Palace of the King. They'd be a good double, yeah. I reckon. A, a gig with them and Massive, you get the best of both worlds with these guys. Yeah, too. Billy, yeah. yeah. yeah that'd be mm. cool. But yeah, I gave it 8 out of 10. Um, step aside, stand and deliver, nothing and black were my standouts. Cool. Getting some comments, which is cool. Keep them coming, guys, because yeah, that's very much in agreement with what you're saying, and I'm going to be agreeing with you as well. Cool. It's hard rock with a definite southern twang, which, you know, they're from Nashville, so it makes sense. Um, right from the opening note, you just get that feeling. I love the energy on this. There's a lot of infectious sort of, you know, quality to it. Um, got some great groove and swing. This one, you know, it's one of those ones that'll make you move, but it's got some bite as well. Now, the AC to DC vibe is getting a lot of that here, but if you like bands like um, Blackstone Cherry, be another good one to sort of check yep. out as well. Um, uh, you know, you get, you get, but the thing is there are certain songs, it's also not just the vocals, the guitar tone used at certain points reminds you of that, that brittler, um acdc guitar tone as well so there are parts in this that like that reminds me uh what where the night goes reminds me a little bit of um uh, money talks kind of thing yep. so but and the and the thing about the acdc thing i know it's an easy comp to make and everyone's making it which is fair enough um but none of it is a ripoff either it's not just yeah. copy paste they've done a very good job of making it their own thing of it they've just it's very very well done it's, it's very tasteful it, it, i know it's getting a lot you know it's being said a lot but it, it i think it's important to note that it's not just a carbon copy ripoff kind of thing they've done a very good job of making their own style it's just wearing an influence versus you know trying to emulate something which is very important i think they've done a very good job with it um the the vocals have that bond scott touch as well but you know this whole thing is really well done. It doesn't fly close to the sun. It's all that kind of stuff. They, uh, um, Stand and Deliver is another great song on this one too. All these ones keep it um, moving. There's some great tones, great rhythm on this one too. Uh, three Chords is a great track. Um, there were some really nice changes of pace across this one that showcased the storytelling that you mentioned, Dave. Like that storytelling aspect is really cool. Some of it's really observational. Some of it gets you know a bit more internal, and but all of it is really well done, really well written, really well performed. The vocals, the emotive content, or the you know the emotional conviction, I should say, in the vocals was really present, really believable, and it, the way the songs open up the space for those stories to be told was you know really really well done. Um, you know, you get some serious stuff on this one, but you got a lot of fun in here too. So I said that, you know, it's, there's some heartfelt stuff, some, you know, observational societal stuff, and then you got a lot of fun in this one too. It's very, very cool. Uh, 
what I need is the perfect ballad on this record too. The piano was a really nice touch on that one, and it builds to a really nice crescendo. Mm. Uh, with the choir in the background as well on that track, they did everything on that ballad. It's a fucking really good moment. It's really well done on the record. And I love the mix on this too. The mix sounds glorious. I mean, the vocals sit bang in the middle with everything else just filling out the sound around it. Not a lot of tricks on this one at all. This is probably the most straight-ahead mix of the one of the bunch tonight. But just get the great tones and just fucking work it out from there. And they've done a great job with just setting the table and just going, okay, here it is. Go. They've just smoked it. This sounds fantastic. Um, you know, you've got a bit of panning here and there, but that's really about it. Um, apart from usual things like reverb compression, just a little bit here and there. Uh, I think the album flows nicely. It flies by as a listen. This is really easy to repeat spin as well. It's got the good old-fashioned, you know, peaks and troughs that I always bang on about for years and years and years now. But the, the addition of Foley, that, that bar room scene for Baby yeah. on Back was really well done. That was a really nice touch on this one. There's a lot of subtlety to this album, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, it's just a lot of Southern Swing, great groove, great riffs, great vocals, all those things. You hear some fantastic lead work too. Again, they're not reinventing the wheel, but you don't need to do it really, really well. And that's what they've done here. You just write some good songs, put them down, and, and off you go. The closing track, Black, that was a really different track on this one. That stood out. The way this one wrapped up on that track was that was almost a Led Zeppelin kind of a vibe, which is like, oh, hang on. This is very, very cool. Like that last track is like, oh, you know, you got all this ACDC stuff before. And then, and it's not just that, but you know, we've referenced it a few times. But then the last track really just hammers home onto more of a the Zeppelin, that that swing and the hit and the punch of it. It was like just really, really cool. A really great way to close it out. This album is a sneaky kind of a grow because I wrote my notes on this review this morning and listened to it again today at work. And then I was like, no, there's little things you pick up on. Once you get your head around this album, there's, there's more to it than you think. This is one of those ones that's got more than meets the eye, quite you know, the transformer effect. It's it's there's moments on this one where they did like you know, they do a number and then the riff hits one, do number two, the riff hits twice, do number three, the riff hits three times. Like those things there are really really clever, would be perfect in the live environment, and you only pick up on those little details after a few listens kind of thing. So it's one of those ones that's sneaky. It'll grow on you more. as you Like you said the same thing, Dave, it'll grow on you. The more you listen to this, the more you're going to want to come back to it because it's one of those ones that it'll get you from the start, but it'll make you keep coming back for more, which is a really good album. So my score now is what it is, but I reckon it could well be higher by the end of the year because you're going to want to come back to this because these hooks just get stuck in your head. Fucking well written. Well performed. This is a great album. So I got an eight and a half out of 10. Uh, see where the night goes. Step aside and black on my standouts. And this one, but there's no dud tracks. It's another really solid album. So, yeah, a band I didn't know anything about until this week, and grateful to have found it. There's another couple of albums to go through, so I have to find some time to go and do that. That's very, very cool. But we got some um, good comments here, which is nice. I'll go back a bit here to find them. Uh, what do we got? So Nicole says ACDC cross with Chris Stapleton. That's a fair comment as yeah. well. Pay that one definitely. Uh, but Danny's gone, this is cool, Leonard meets Akadaka meets the Black Crows, looking into more. So, yeah, that's another good comp, comp there too. Uh, he's also gone Bourbons and Blunts, and that this is this is an album for that. <laughs> Definitely an album for that. Uh, Darren says, gives me Southern Rock and ACDC vibes, which, you know, there's a theme going along here as well. Bella said the singer did a great job with What I Need. Yes, definitely, definitely so. Um Sally says, it's a good song and you'd be happy enough to listen, but they don't colour outside the lines and I get a bit bored after a few songs like this. And that's a fair point too. Like I said, they're not reinventing the wheel, but I just think they've done a very good job with it. Uh, Dean says, even get some Black Smoke Trigger in there. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, Andrew says, totally get the influence reference, but yeah, they're doing their own thing. I like it, yeah. While we've yeah. all mentioned a lot, but they are def it's, it's really worth reiterating. They're doing their own thing. It's an easy comparison to make because of tones. But they're doing their own things. It's not a rip-off band at all. Uh, Dean says, nothing wrong with some ACDC vibes. Most bands have their vibe in their songs because of how they did the whole catalogue, and that's pretty true as well. Uh, but he also says, be good with Treatment or Dirty Honey. Treatment would be a great yeah. band, guys. That yeah. would be a great gig. Uh, he's gone, I need to check out more of these guys. Seems up my alley. And uh, Lee says, three listens in and getting better with each listen, more than just ACDC clones. Definitely. That's a bang-on point there, Lee. Well done. And uh, Dean's closed out there with saying, no need to reinvent the wheel. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is exactly. a big saying for this kind of stuff here. <clears throat> so is there anything else you wanted to add there, Dave? No, it's definitely listen to that album if you haven't heard it. Cool. That was a, a good little – because it was a bit of a quieter week in terms of releases. Next week's huge. Um, 
but but this week <clears throat> was a little bit quiet. So you're sitting there going, okay, what are we going to – not not what are we going to review, but it's that whole, okay, what are we, what are we actually going to pick? Because you only spend X amount of time listening to it and, and you go for it. And I'm glad this one, you know. Yeah, it worked out well. It was some good stuff. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. That was a nice find. So it's been a, a, a diverse little collection tonight, some three very different albums. But, yeah, make sure you check out what you like and let us know what you think and um, go from there. A quick little shout-out here to our Patreon supporters. Um, there's a few here I've got a special shout-out to. So Tim Caterson, TC, you know him, uh, but also Sonia, uh, Lee, Conrad, Jason, Brendan, 16 by 9 band there, uh, Marty, Sam, Trash, Carolyn, Gwyneth, Andrew, Heyman, Daniel, Man Family and Bell, who's here tonight as well. Uh, thank you all so much for your fantastic support. Do appreciate it. That's in our Patreon page. If you want to go shout out like this or a whole lot more, I'm putting a link in the comments now. It's also in the description. It's a link to our Patreon page. Now, at the very bare minimum, if you put in just a couple of bucks a month, literally $2 Australian a month, um, you'll get daily updates, which can include up to 12 new pieces of music on a daily basis, not just a, uh, a random one here and there, but it's like daily you get these updates from us. And beyond that, you can go a lot further and, and just see what, you know, sort of gets your attention. You get shout outs. You can, but all that stuff too, not, not only the uh, daily updates, but you also get to vote on our classic albums, which we do on Thursday. So um, that'll become, I'll tease that one in a moment. But yeah, you get to vote, you get to have your input, you get to ask questions, you get some, it's a much more direct line to us. So if you want to get a hold of us, best way to do it is join patreon so please do check it out would really really love um uh to get as much support as we can there we're about probably a quarter to a third of the way to the ultimate goal of what i'd like to get to on that one because it is just um <laughs> i'll get to that comment in a second but um but yeah no there's there's a lot um that we could do because the way this works is we're all volunteers. We all do this outside of our day jobs. And uh, I, on the oh, – I hate doing this, but gonna, I have to do it because we've got to keep plugging it. Um, but, yeah, I wear, I bear the brunt of the workload. I'm here every episode. I do all the setup. I do all the editing for TV, set it all up. I do everything. So all the behind-the-scenes stuff falls to me, and I get on camera and do this stuff as well. So the idea here is to get me doing – as or a lot less of the day job stuff and a lot more of this, and I just need the hour still, but I've got to be able to sacrifice the the payment kind of thing. Not looking to make it full time. If I could, great, I would love to, but um, it'd be if you just want you to know that if you are chipping into that platform, you are directly helping me to pay the bills so I can focus on what I'm doing here and uh, getting some other stuff done as well. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, so yes, that's there. I'll give that a big plug. So I've done that now, and that's whatever. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, what? Da, 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 da. Okay, so Lee has gone last week's release of a huge. We, no, we didn't cover Zeal and Arda. Interested to see that reviewed. We are keeping a little list um, on that note of ones we haven't gotten to in these streams that we're going to go and just not stream them. We're going to just set aside and just film them and then release them as bonus content. Or we might stream it. I don't know, but we'll do it like on a Sunday or something random one day and just sort of get a bunch of albums we haven't done yet. There's a few there. Uh, that we plan to do on Thursday, for example. We didn't do the Thursday stream, so there's ones that we've got notes on that we haven't gotten to, but we're planning on doing that. Zealanada is one of those ones we do want to get to. Same thing with Tony Martin's album from earlier this year. There's a few kicking around as well. So that is definitely a plan. We are going to get to them. I just don't know when, but we do plan to get to it. Uh, Dave, your friend is going on me. See, hope to see him again. <laughs> I think that's oh, the... He'll be here all the time. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but Danny's also said, fuck that, don't be cheap. You can't do the big one. So there you go. Cheers for the show. <laughs> we do appreciate that one. And uh, Lee's also said, uh, put your hand in your pocket and chip in. Thank you very much for the support. You are a great one and you do us a lot of support there. But Dean said, uh, you've been doing it for a long time, Andrew. Hardest working man I know, especially for music promotion. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, for those that don't know, I've been doing this for over a decade now. Um mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so it's, there's a lot of hours that have gone to this. And like I said, I put in 40 hours plus a week into this on top of day of job and looking after family that too. So, yeah, any help you can give us in that regard will allow me to do a lot, lot more. And we've got a decade worth of shit that's in the archive that I haven't got around to editing yet, so I'd love to get that out there as well. So any help you can give us there, we're greatly appreciated. And if you can't do that, that's all good. Just share it around and get other people to know about it and also just sharing our posts, all that kind of stuff is really – it really does help us out getting into the algorithm all that kind of stuff. Um yeah, all this sort of stuff there too. Uh, Bell has gone. You're doing an amazing job, Andrew. Thank you for the kind words there. I'm not as good at certain things as I'd like to be. You know that firsthand with getting back to people on time. I'm very shit at that. That's just because I'm so flat out. But I do try the best I can. But I do appreciate the kind words. But Dean's also said, it seems like yesterday you started it with Shane. 
fuck, that's going back a fair ways. Um, we've gone through a few changes over the years, haven't we, Dave? Yeah, a lot has <laughs> happened. <laughs> a lot of locations, a lot of different methods of doing things. Yeah. We keep going, though. We'll keep going for as long that's as we can. I'm sure that Jody will get jack of it at some point and tell me to fucking retire, but until that happens, <laughs> keep going for as long as I can. Um, no, I, I, I love doing it. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. And if I tell you honestly that if I wasn't doing this, probably drive my family nuts because I'm that sort of person that needs to be doing something with their time. Um, but, yeah, I just, the more I do, the more I know I could do. And this year, honestly, I, you'd see the same thing. The emails, they're just nonstop now. It's just yeah. All this time, year. Just flooded bonkers um absolutely bonkers oh here we go dean's gone you and shane on the couch i remember that you missed the first of them because we was in a spare bedroom on two separate chairs so that's going back check out the very first on youtube we had a lot of different sets we had two chairs had the blue couch um we had the bar set up in one room then the bar in another room then we had the big stage we built the big stage that we built and then we had yeah. the garage set and now we've got this set that's behind me where we film on site and yeah, there's, there's a lot. We've done a lot over the years. It's fucking wow. It's funny when you look back on what we've done. Like, we'll be, we'll be doing a bit of a revisit thing um, a bit later this year because this year actually celebrates 10 years on community television as well. So it's um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nuts. We've been doing this since 2011. Been on TV since 2012. So that's how long we've been at this for. And TV is coming up on 10 years uh, this year, which is bonkers to think about that. That's absolutely nuts. Um, wow. Uh, I've got actually a poster over there. Uh, we did a gig Friday, 6th of July in 2012, which is our Channel 31 launch party. We had, this is going back, the Deep End, Dead Star Renegade and Overdrive played that night. And I got up on stage and played a song with Overdrive, a couple of songs actually with Overdrive. So it was a, a lot of fun. I got footage of that kicking around too. I should actually dig that out at some point and edit it up. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> we've had a lot going on. Uh, what else we got here? So Nicole says, subscribe, ring the bell, smash the like button and all that, um, uh, in the head. It all helps to, it does definitely all those things help. So thank you very much, Nicole, for that. Dean says, been a follower ever since then. So that's what nine years it'd be about that, mate. It'd be about that. Uh, Andrew says, I did enjoy the live recordings at whole lot of love. Any more coming up now that we are opening they up? Were fun. They were fun. We haven't planned any, uh, but we are. We've been waiting for a little bit of consistency with this sort of stuff. Still not entirely convinced it's going to stay this way, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but we would like to do something more in that space. Not We used to do monthly. I don't want to go back to every month. That was insane. Maybe sort of like once a quarter, maybe twice a year. We might do something yeah. special in that regard. Um, but we'll see how we go with that. We haven't got any plans, but we are talking about in loose terms, trying to get something like that happening again. So that's there for you as well. Uh, Danny says, been listening, watching for near as long, bro. Turn me on to Butler. It's a good band over the last 10 years. Love you for it. Thank you very much for sticking with us. Uh, we've been through a lot of shit over the years, but it's been great. <laughs> uh, the amount of music we've found over the years has been insane. And I wouldn't um, know any of these bands that we talk about without doing this. We actually go searching for it. And if we can put people onto it, that's what it's all about, isn't it, yeah. Dave? That's exactly it. Yeah, I mean, we we won the award last year, but you know we yeah. weren't expecting it. But what mm. always makes me happy is when someone like at the local supermarket comes up, "Hey, you're the guy from that show. I love what you guys do. Mm. Found a whole bunch of cool bands, and you know that makes me happy. You know? I've I've loved music most of my life, and if other people find stuff because of what we do, that's cool. That's the best thing. I think the highest compliment we ever get is when someone spends their money on a band, be it on merch, on an album, or going and seeing them live. Whenever we get a comment that says, I've seen this band or I've bought their CD because of what you guys have said, yeah. that's the highest compliment. If someone's willing to invest their money into things we say, <laughs> that's kind of um, – that, that never ceases to blow my mind, <laughs> that idea. But, yeah, I, I love it. So if you find stuff you like, go and support it. It's greatly – like, it's worth it. Uh, Sally says, just want to say I miss Nikki's wicked presence. Bring back the girls or maybe you could just put your frocks on. I'm not wearing a frock anytime soon. I don't know if Dave can be convinced to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. But, no, we are playing, bringing the girls back. No, you're lucky uh, to wear as as... Yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, you and me both. I've got pajama pants on, so that's all right. No, uh, look, yeah, we are definitely going to bring them back uh, <laughs> in the near future. If you think... Now that things are opening up and the gigs are starting to come back again, we're working that back into play as we go along so we'll see what happens with that 
Uh, Danny says, remember that first set of Garage Wall? Yes, we got that as well. And uh, Dean says, I'll get you on stage with my band then. Fuck. All right, that'll be – Um, I'll have to <laughs> – I have to practice. I haven't picked up my guitar in anger for a long time now. It's been a long time. I, I used to teach years ago, and I've probably forgotten how to play now. Um, I'm far too busy doing this stuff. Get Dave. Dave plays more than me. I try. You, you do better <laughs> than me. You do a lot better than me. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Carl has gone. You guys are fantastic. You even made me look good on TV, Andrew. Not an easy task. Hey, it's easy, mate. You got the fucking hair for it. That's all right. Um, and Danny says, hey, what happened to you slobs putting on an HRS presenters cover band together? AA? That is eventually in the works. We are going to do something in that space. That's one of the things we've been talking about for quite some time. Uh, but we haven't been able to do it because we haven't had any uncertainty with you know doing a gig. So it's, getting us all together to commit to something like that is going to take a bit of doing. We do want yeah. to do it with no certainty at the moment and with everything being cancelled at the drop of a hat. It's, a, it's, it's there, but it's sort of skating along the ice, just sort of waiting for the right time to sort of, you know, be planned and, and mapped out. Uh, <laughs> Dean says get both of you then, and uh, Sally's <laughs> gone. Andrew can sing too. Not for a long time, but, yeah, I can sort of hold a note a little bit, so we'll see how we go with that. And uh, Danny has gone waiting. Yeah, keep waiting, unfortunately. that's <laughs> I would like to do it tomorrow, but it's not quite as simple as that. We've got to herd the cats that is this crew together to do something like that to begin with, and then um, we've got to just... Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but, yeah, it is definitely an idea. We haven't shelved it. It's not like it's gone away. It's just a matter of finding the right time to get it done. Uh, Andrew said, I used to just listen to music I like, but listen to you guys, I've started to understand why I like it. It also put me onto a lot of local bands, my friendship with Chris Quinlan. And that's a great thing there. The people you meet cool. doing this and the community you build, yeah. that's fantastic. And Chris is a great guy as well. Check out his show, Melbourne Musos, on community television as well. And... Um, yeah, that community aspect. And I'm glad we're able to help you understand why you like the music. <laughs> um, sometimes I don't know why I'm saying what I say, but, you know, that's um, no, we, we that's really what it's all about in it, Dave. I don't know. Yeah, for me, it's just get the community, get the music out there and just sort of, you know, make this as positive an experience as it can be while being honest. We don't say everything's great when it's not, but just, you know, yeah. be honest. And I just love doing that. That's it. I just like drinking and talking music. <laughs> well, that's we do that. We're professionals at that. Um, yeah. That's about the most professional thing we do is drink and talk shit. So don't listen to us <laughs> for anything important. Um, no life-changing decisions made by us. Just just listen to us for no. music content. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Danny's gone. End of your charity gig. Maybe open your Christmas event. We would like to do something for Christmas. I will see how we go with that. Oh, cool. Andrew's gone that Chris gave him a drum kit recently. That's awesome. That's a cool thing, man. Well, that, yeah. I said, I know he's a great bloke, so that's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, Dean says, a flashback episode will be cool and go to the beginning and go through the years, like one review from every year till now. Fuck me. Wow. That might actually not be a bad idea for like the end of year, like that Christmas marathon or or New Year marathon that we do might be something to put together for the tv six hour brackets that we get watch us all get older yeah fuck my hair was a lot shorter then too um (laughs) (laughs) so that would be that's a cool idea i'll have to bookmark that as an idea we'll have to look into that one uh nicole says the melbourne metal scene is a community absolutely it is and uh man family good to see you here uh easter event songs about bunnies whoo man try into easter theme show should try and work that in I think it's April this year. Is it April or is it March? Fuck, I don't know. Oh, just a whole bunch of death metal songs about crucifixion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Zombies rising from the dead. Yeah, it can be done. I'll just play some yeah. Wednesday food. We can find something. Oh, here we go. Speaking of the devil, Shane's here giving us the horn. So good to see you, buddy. Hope <laughs> you're well. Um, good to see you. And uh, Dean's going, I remember your hair being short. It wasn't short, short. You, all we got on TV, it was short. Um, okay, the Carl's gone metal version of Jive Bunny. What we should do, I know that Leo Moriccioli did that cover with the the was it the bunny or was that purely east? I don't know what it was, but there was something there too. So it's like, yeah, there's a I'm sure we could find some interesting covers and yeah. Easter metal songs that'd be cool. Um, all right, Sally's gone. Have you got the right skill set across all the staff to do a THRS band? I'm happy to sing along with Andrew. Yes, we do. Um, the only thing we don't have is a designated bass player, but I'm happy to pick that up and play it because I used to teach rhythm guitar, so it's not that hard to jump out and um, 
do that kind of stuff too. So I could jump onto the bass guitar. I've got enough guitarists here as well. I've got drummers. We've got singers. Um, yeah, we've got a few people that can do a few different things. So we could actually do something like that eventually. Again, it'll take some practice and we're a bit rusty. We're a bit busy doing other stuff. But, yeah, we could do something in that space. You only do guitar, don't you, Dave? There's nothing else in your little... Little bit of piano. Okay, cool. Same as me. A little bit of keyboard, piano kind of stuff. Yeah. Lee's gone here. Would be cool if you could reach out to Greta Tate. Would love an interview with stories of metal from Melbourne. Now, Greta is awesome. Very shy when it comes to that kind of stuff, though. So I will take it on advisement, but I don't know if we can actually get that one across the line. We'll see what we can do, but I know she's extremely shy about that kind of stuff. So if Greta sees this and she's up for it, let us know. Um, but We'll keep that one there as another idea that'd be cool to do as well. <laughs> Andrew's gone, I can photograph the gig. That'd be cool. And Dean's gone, Dave, do November rain then. So there we go. Um, <laughs> I am actually working on it. I might shock the hell out of you. <laughs> Fucking hell, okay. If you pull that off, I'll be impressed, mate, because I, I tabbed that solo for a student years ago, and I was like, fucking never again in my mm. hand tab a song like that. Fuck off. The guitar solo Just- is fucking hard. Yeah. The first one's not too bad. The second one gets a bit hard. That last one, it's like, no. Nah. Yeah. There's a lot of improvisation. Yeah. But yeah. Working on the piano as well. But yeah. Okay. Who knows? Cool. I'm not singing. <laughs> I think people leave. I'm not singing that one. Fuck off my voice. <laughs> you know, think of it like a Lemmy voice, and that's about where I'm at these days. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not doing that one. Uh, Nicole's gone. Greta is very humbled. Yes, it's true. And she's lovely as well. But yeah. Would love to get her on, but like I said, it's very hard to lock that one down. But I think we're about done. Are we done, Dave? I think we're done. I think so. Okay. Let's uh, do the usual wrap-up stuff. So we're doing an Armored Saint, Armored Saint special soon. Our next special uh, online at the end of March will be uh, Beatles versus Stones. So there'll be some social posts coming up on that very, very soon too. I uh, want to get your top five albums from both those bands. We've got an audience poll going, and then we'll sort of put the top five as the audience vote and just pit them against each other and see what the hell comes out of it. Um, what else has we got here? Um, then, okay, for just general stuff coming up this week. So Thursday night, we're going to be doing another stream, 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. So we're going to talk about Bloody Wood, Star One, and a classic from Pretty Maids. So that's coming up on Thursday. On 10 o'clock Australian Central Daylight Time, the same night, tune in Channel 44 in Adelaide as uh, Dave and I get together to talk about some new music uh, and play some clips for you. So that's what's coming up on Thursday on Channel 44 in Adelaide. Then Saturday night, 10.30 p.m., Channel 31 in Melbourne. We've got a THRS marathon for the end of the month. The first two hours is an anything goes bit of music that we changed the plan. We're going to do the Armored State. We're going to hold that off and do a little bit later on the Armored State one, but we just got together to fill two hours in with anything goes. So there's a mix of new and classic stuff in there as well. So that'll be a lot of fun. I'm in the middle of chopping that together now, which has just got me crunched between now and Wednesday, but we'll see how we go with that. But, yeah, that's what's coming up on Saturday night, and that'll be followed after the first two hours with some older episodes just to fill out until about 4.30 in the morning for you. And then next Monday, the plan, if everything goes, if everything gets released and everything, you know, because things can change pretty quickly, but if everything goes to plan, on Monday we'll talk about Frankenbach, Hammerfall, and Scorpions. That's what's coming up on Monday night. So that's what's Ooh. coming up in the next week uh, with everything going on. Um, I think that's about it. It's the usual stuff, but make sure you yeah, like, follow, subscribe, all the usual stuff that everyone gets you to do. Check out our description box for this episode for all the links you need to do that. Please check out our Patreon page. I did waffle on about that before, but please do check it out, and any help you can give us there is greatly appreciated. And speaking of that sort of stuff, a big thank you to our fantastic sponsors in Squid Ink, Screen Printing, Alt, Colt, and Rockstar Finance. Big thank you to them. Their details, just like ours, are in the description of the episode, so please find them. Give them a like, a follow, a share. Any of that sort of stuff is greatly, greatly appreciated. Same thing as it is for us as well. I'm seeing some more comments. I'll get to those in a second. Um, just want to make sure we do all the usual stuff here before I go to the bin. All right, quick comments here. So Danny's gone, drink up, rock on, stay safe all. We're not quite out of here, but we'll be in a minute. Likewise to you, though, friend. That's always good to look after, but have fun while you're doing it. Dean says, Rose, I do playing Friday and Saturday night at the Hotel Westwood, 8 p.m., $40 if anyone is keen. Awesome. Well done. Get on down if you're keen. And uh, Andrew's gone, found another local band worth a listen on Friday night, Gold Mines. Not metal, but hard rock. Send me a link, Andrew. Uh, happy to check out more. Uh, that's the best way to get my attention. Send me something. Um, yeah, comments, I will pull them up on the screen, but I'll forget about them as soon as we wrap up. <laughs> so send me a message or something to, to give me a link. All righty. But anyway, we have to go to the traditional way we close these things out. Let's go to the bin. So, Dave, what are you binning this week before we get out of here? Yeah, it's been in there a bunch of times, but it's going in there again. Triple M. 
<laughs> it's it's on at work. Most of the time I got my earplugs in, listening to music on my phone, but I can't do that all the time. And the other guy I work with has noticed this as well. They are playing some new songs. You got the new Eddie yeah. Vedder, you got the new Liam Gilliver, you got the new Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm-hmm. They don't play the new Slash at all. However, oh. they're quite happy to play the advertisement just yeah. about every hour, over mm-hmm. and over. You know, happy to take the money from the advertisement, but you're not going to play the song. Playing Paradise City a bunch of times, playing new music from other bands, but not not going to play a Slash song. And I believe the same thing happened the last time we dropped an album too. Yeah. So. Fuck Triple M in the bin. <laughs> I agree. Um, quickly, Carl has gone. <laughs> I'm so tempted to send you a Coldplay link now. If you do, I'm putting <laughs> it in next week. Um, so <laughs> that's, that's going to work. All right. My bin tonight is actually Loudwire of all places. You know, we, we wow. as we do this one, we follow all these news articles just to get some shit to talk about, to see what's going on. Um, but they put an article up. Uh, this week about how rock bands find it so hard to find other rock bands and you know what it takes to make it and all that kind of stuff and then proceeded to put up an article with a list of bands that are quote unquote leading the way and they really aren't leading the way at all like they had Greta Fan Fleet as the top one their second album ain't it first one I get second one no um you know it, it, there's a lot better bands out there to you know fly the flag quote unquote bands like the treatment and and other stuff as well too but they you know they had um uh fucking hell uh they had what was it they had goodbye june and a few other ones in there as well but i would just like to see them you know actually you know hone in and and know what they're talking about versus just you know clickbait headline and then an article on it so yeah that kind of crap can can go in the bin you know there's a lot of great music out there we find it every week to talk about i'm sure they could do the same and come up with a really good list of people for check out you know, for pe- uh, bands for people to check out, I should say. So, yeah, that kind of clickbait shit in the bin. Fuck them. Um, but Dean's gone, yeah, it's shit, Dave. Triple M can go, uh, Can we can all go to war with him. Been there, done that. They don't like me at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> they don't like any of it. Um, but, yeah, they, they haven't liked me for quite some time. I've choos- chosen just to fucking ignore the pricks because they're useless. Um Dean says no airborne in flying the flag. No, they weren't in that list. I'll tell you that right now. They were not in that list, and they should be, but they weren't. Um, yeah, it was a weird article. I'm not going to link it. It's just yeah, it was a weird one. Just thinking, going, what the fuck are you want about? Um, yeah, it didn't make any sense to me doing what we do. I just found, I just you know, you just know there's a great. We should probably do an article, like not an article, a, a topic. Ten bands we think are flying the flag for you know rock and metal that are coming up. You know, I only have like two or three albums out. <laughs> be an interesting topic at some point I'll, I'll bookmark that for another time but i think that's about it unless there's anything else you wanted to add there dave or we're just gonna mosey on out of here we're done. we're done all right cool well thank you one and all for joining us tonight and if you're tuning in later on you're not live then we do appreciate you taking the time to to check out what we're talking about and have some fun with us as well we do appreciate it a lot and uh we'll see you all again very very soon our next stream is coming up on thursday night uh before we do <laughs> dean's gone that's a good idea nice topic and Lee's gone, Hard and Heavy app isn't too bad in comparison to Lamb Radio Station playlist. I will agree with that. The Hard and Heavy yeah. section is much more. Yeah, that's a, that's a valid point. Very valid point. I'll pay that one. Uh, that's to be fair. But they can still go in the fucking bin anyway. Um, <laughs> just for old time's sake. Uh, Nicole said, thanks again, guys. Good night, all. And uh, I think that's where we'll leave it. I'll get to the other comments after the fact. But thank you all once again for joining us. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Until next time, though, I'm Andrew. I'm Dave. As always, drink up and rock on.